kids, pardon my appearance, but if you're going to talk about La Liz, you might as well dress the part. Butterfield ate anyone? Actually, you know, I did have dark hair at the beginning of the year. Yes, that's me hamming it up. Um, but it's bleached back to its usual light blonde. For now, anyway. Uh, today, I want to show you a few things from my collection that belong to Elizabeth Taylor. And I am so proud to have them in my collection. And, well, to be sort of caretaker of these items. Um, she once said about her famous jewelry that they were hers temporarily. She was kind of a guardian of them, a caretaker of them. She knew that you can't take it with you. So I have several things from Taylor's estate, from Julian's Christie's, some of the big auction houses. And I'll show you a few things today and some more in the future. Um, first up, let's look at this fabulous folder. There's some good things in here. When Liz Taylor married Larry Fortensky in 1991, she had a, a florist to the stars named David Jones take care of, of the floral arrangements and everything. And I have his folder from that. He was a bit secretive about things. He was very secretive about this at the time, but I happen to have it in my possession now. It's just wonderful. It's filled with little notes and phone numbers and colors that give you some ideas. This unfortunately is empty. Um, it says enclosed, mother of bride and Larry's grandmother. It does note bridesmaids and maid of honor. We have yellow baby roses. And let's take a look at these. You are going to love these. These were apparently some dress designs for Elizabeth to pick from. Here is one from Mary McGill, a gray lace with gray chiffon. This is what the dress, the sketch that the designer made. And enclosed chiffon and a sample of what the top part would look like. I also have another dress design from Nolan Miller. Let me get a better shot of that. There we go. And this was a design he was going to do for her. We also have the same sort of thing, the chiffon and the floral on top. So we have samples of the material. If I can get my hands on it. These are really beautiful, delicate fabrics. We do know she wore a yellow, a pale yellow dress. We even have wedding cake ideas that she had looked at from different bakeries. This one is from a place called Fantasy Frostings in Whittier, California. So I'm not sure what the cake looked like. I read that it was a five-tiered chocolate mousse cake. We have, this was one that was in the folder and another design. Aren't these pretty? They look good enough to eat. Another design that she looked at. And this is also from Fantasy Frostings. It says, let's see, 225 servings. There is another one. Some of these look like they may be, I think this is a duplicate of one of the other ones. I do not know if she settled on any of these or just went with a different style altogether because I can't find photos of the cake. Uh, also in the folder are just some wonderful papers to look at. We have telephone numbers, estimates. I'm not sure who some of these people are, but these are just great notes that came from, from David's estate. This one is really nice. It did a kind of a blueprint of where the ceremony would take place, what it would look like. It shows the tents, the trim, 
And I don't know how well you can really see this on camera. I will try to show it to you. Maybe I'll go over it. But it, it does show the size of the walls, the trim, the drapes, the floor plans and everything. This is really some great stuff in here. We have maps to Neverland, which is where the wedding was held. And these little notes, I'm not sure why this map has no, no marked on the bottom. <laughs> and this is an invitation to the wedding. The envelope is made by Cartier. Yes, nothing but the best. Here is the invitation. It is plain, but it is elegant. Look at that. In here, but it was sent to one of her sons, Michael Wilding Jr. So we have his copy of his mother's wedding invitation in here. We have some other things. This one is, I'm not quite sure, this is on Elizabeth Taylor's stationery. Uh, as per our conversation earlier, enclosed, please find samples of flowers from Elizabeth's bridal headpiece. And this was on there. These are not flowers, of course, but she did wear a pale yellow dress, so this is probably a sample of the fabric from her dress. And then there are estimates for the wedding with lots of things blacked out and crossed off and numbers on the back and prices and, and all sorts of goodies like estimates of almost $8,000 for some trees. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Silk white flowers for top of gazebo, garlands of greens, flowers for four urns. We do see more about the cake on here if these were the final estimates. The cake top, lily of the valley, gardenias and stephanotis around the cake. The bride bouquet says lily of the valley, Phalaenopsis, orchids, gardenias, roses, and variegated ivies. This is just a fun glimpse into one of the biggest weddings of the decade. We also have some more notes right here. Um, I see something for animal actors. This is what I call my fabulous folder. It's called Florist to the Stars at times in the papers. Was hired to do the arrangements for this. Um, he was pretty secretive, of course, about things, and he would later actually have an unlisted phone number because he only did jobs from contacts, people that he knew that had checked out. So he was a businessman with an unlisted number, sort of. He'd had clients in his past, like Jack Benny and Joan Crawford, Mamie Eisenhower, Betsy Bloomingdale, Tony Curtis, and Nancy and Ronald Reagan. Uh, indeed, Jones would continue to do work for the Reagan White House, Floral Designs, and he did pass away in 2014 when he was 78 years old. So that's my little collectible tour for the day. I do have more Liz items, and I promise I'm going to get to some of those Marilyn Monroe items when I'll be glad to show you those things coming up in the near future and also some more schlock tales. I've got plenty of inspiration for some of those around Hollywood, Beverly Hills in the early days. I just need to sit down and get the time to research them a bit more. Some ghost stories of Hollywood that are off the beaten track and probably not the same old things you've heard over and over, but I will get to those when I get time and do more research. But I want all of you to have a great Thanksgiving and be safe.